In this mini tutorial, we're going to think briefly about the blood supply to the spinal cord. Um, and the major vessels to the spinal cord are the anterior spinal artery, which runs along the midline in the anterior sulcus of the spinal cord, and the paired posterior spinal arteries, which supply the more dorsal aspects. Now, these arteries, um, throughout most of the length of the cord, are fed with blood by segmental vessels coming off of the aorta. However, as you should remember, right at the top of the cord, the anterior spinal artery also arises as the confluence of two branches from the vertebrals. So we've got contributions from the vertebrals and the segmental arteries feeding into the spinal cord blood supply. Finally, an important vessel that you also need to remember is this branch here, this artery of Adamkiewicz, which is a really important major tributary to the lower part of the spinal cord. And this vessel is particularly vulnerable um, in aneurysm repairs. And it's actually been the source of quite some litigation for certain vascular surgeons who've inadvertently traumatised this vessel when repairing aneurysms of the aorta, leading to spinal cord syndromes. So that's a really important vessel for you to be aware of. Now, let's have a think about the territories of the anterior and posterior spinal arteries. So basically, the anterior spinal artery supplies the anterior uh, two-thirds of the spinal cord, whereas the posterior spinal artery supplies the posterior third. But let's draw that out in a little bit more detail. So here is our um, section through the spinal cord, like this, with our grey matter there. OK. Now let's draw some important tracts on. So here are the lateral corticospinal tracts. OK, we'll label that as CST. The spinothalamic tracts here. So we'll label that STT. And the dorsal columns here. So we'll label those DC. And this is important because the different tracts fall under the territories of different um, spinal arteries. So to represent the territory of the anterior, anterior spinal artery, we'll use this kind of pinky purply colour uh, and we'll fill in the anterior two-thirds of the cord which is supplied by the anterior spinal artery. Something like this. Okay. So this is the anterior spinal artery territory using the same colour that's been used in the diagram above. And you can see that the anterior spinal artery supplies the anterior two-thirds of the cord and that includes the grey matter of the ventral horns, the corticospinal tracts and the spinothalamic tracts. So the anterior spinal artery is, is a really important vessel supplying most of the important pathways in the cord. Now let's draw on the distribution of the posterior spinal artery um, and we'll do that in the kind of greeny colour used in the diagram on the top left. So the posterior spinal artery supplies the posterior one-third of the spinal cord, roughly, which is this region here. Okay, And you can see that the posterior spinal artery therefore supplies the region of the dorsal column pathways, some or most of the dorsal horns. Okay, <clears throat> So that's the posterior third of the cord. Therefore, you can predict what the clinical effect would be of blockage of the anterior or posterior spinal arteries. So if the anterior spinal artery was blocked, because it's a midline vessel, it would have a bilateral effect and we, it would lead to loss of spinothalamic tract modalities below the le level of the blockage and also upper motor neurone signs below the level of the blockage because of interruption of the corticospinal tract. The posterior spinal arteries are less commonly blocked, but if they got blocked, we might get um, bilateral, but more frequently unilateral 
effects because they are paired, okay? So if the posterior spinal artery on this side blocked, we would get ipsilateral loss of dorsal column modalities below the level of the lesion. So that's, those are the very basic aspects of the spinal cord blood supply um, and the patterns that we see in patients with occlusion of these vessels tells us which vessel has been affected. That's all.